Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Nate's Pink Bookshelf. My name is Nate Denise, for those of you who are new to the channel or who just happened to stumble across this video. And today's video is going to be my Tome Topple Round 12 TBR. Now, I'm so excited for this. I was not expecting it, but when I saw Sam's video when she released it, I was so excited. It took me a minute to figure out my TBR because I have a lot of tomes, but they're not tomes that I really want to read right now. Um, but for those who don't know what Tome Topple is, Tome Topple is hosted by Sam from Thoughts on Tomes as well as other co-hosts. I will leave a link. You can click the I to go to Sam's video and all the other information with all the other hosts will be down below in the description bar as well as like the prompts and stuff like that. But um, it's basically a two-week readathon where you read Tomes. And Tomes are books over 500 pages, um, exactly 500 pages or more. And it is supposed to be an actual novel, not a short story collection or anthology. Um, they prefer, if I'm not mistaken, for the actual novel itself to be over 500 pages. Graphic novels can be used if it's like a complete bind up of the graphic novel. I hope that makes sense. But um, yeah, I absolutely adore Tone Topple. I have joined during round eight and then I kept going to nine, 10, and 11. So I have partaken in four rounds already and I enjoy it so much. So this will be my fifth round and I cannot wait um, for that. But I have my books picked. So there are nine prompts, which they do a bingo board. The bingo board is here. And um, they also have like, I don't want to say a reward system, but there's a system in which if you complete one to three prompts, you are considered a student. If you complete four to six, you are a teacher. And if you do seven to nine, you are a sage. I always go for sage, which means that I have to complete seven to nine prompts. With this TBR, I am going to be completing either eight or nine. The reason I'm saying that is because I have four books solidified on my TBR. Um, my fifth book I am still debating on because I have three books that will complete two prompts and then um, a fourth book that completes only one. So if I go with that one, I'm only completing eight of the challenges. And if I go with one of the other ones, then I'm completing all nine. So either way, I'm going to be a sage. But, you know, your girl is trying to do a lot. However, I also need to keep in mind that I have lots of other books that I'm reading. If you can see my reading cart right here, I have <laughs> lots of books that need to be read for August. So, pray for me. Um, but I'm excited, excited, excited. So, I'm going to run through the books. I'm looking down because I have, like, the prompts written down. I'm going to run through the books that I'm picking out. I'm going to tell you guys how many days it's going to take me to read them as well as uh, page count and all that. So, um... We're, done, we're gonna dive in. So the first book is gonna be The Well of Ascension by Brandon Sanderson. This is the first book in the Miss Born Era 1 trilogy. Um, and I'm behind on reading this because I'm currently partaking in the Cosmere Along. You can click the eye to go to Kaz's video about that. But um, basically it's where they're reading Brandon Sanderson's works um, in honor of, I believe, the fourth book in his Stormlight Archive series release. So we have already read... Uh, Mistborn Era 1, of course. Uh, Mistborn or Final Empire, whatever you call it. Um, we read that. Mm -hmm. We have read Elantris. We have read, uh, I think it was another one we read. Can't really remember the name of it right now. But um, they also read The Well of Ascension as well as The Hero of Ages, but I completely just forgot and did not read them. So for August and September, they'll be diving into Warbreaker. I've already read Warbreaker. That was literally the first Brandon Sanderson book I read, and I freaking adored it. Gave five stars. So Instead, for August, I'm going to dive into The Well of Ascension, and then for September, I'm going to dive into The Hero of Ages. That way, when October comes, I'll be ready for the Stormlight Archives because I'm ready. I'm ready. I have books one and three. I need to get book two, but we ain't going to worry about that right now. I got a few months before I can, before I need to have book two. But um, yeah, we're going to dive into this, and this is just following up with the events of Mistborn or The Final Empire, whatever your book is called. My first book is called Mistborn, which is why I call it Mistborn. But I know the UK editions, they call it the Final Empire. So, don't really know. But I read that. I enjoyed it. I think I gave it a four stars. Um, I'm excited to dive back into this. I can't remember the character's names. Ben. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to see what happens with Ben and um, that dude that she was with. Because, yeah, we need we need answers. And um, the Lord Ruler, the Dark One, whatever you want to call him, he's annoying um, and confusing at the same time. And just, just the events of the end of Miss Warren has me confused. So I need answers. I, I need answers and I need to continue. I did get the floppy edition. Um, so yeah, the Miss Warren copy I have is a mass market paperback. So I will actually be upgrading to um, this 
edition of Miss Warren because for some reason my mass market, especially my fantasy mass markets, the pages rip out easily and I don't like that. So I'm going to just get the new version of this, uh, the Miss Warren in this version, if that makes sense. So yeah so this is going to fulfill prompts one and eight so prompt one is to read the tone that has been on your tbr the longest of the ones that i have on my tbr for round 12 brandon sanderson has always been on my tbr so we have that and then for prompt eight is to read the tome on your tbr with the most pages this book is clocking in at 756 pages so this is actually going to be a six day read for me um which is perfectly fine um definitely normally would finish this within four or five days but because I'm reading so many books, I'm going to make this a six day read. So we have this. I'm super, super excited to dive back in and just visit Ben again and see how bad she can be. You know, amazing. Um, and this deals with um, their magic system is based on metals. So you ingest certain metals to do certain things. Pretty much. This is a uh, high fantasy. So, yeah. The next book on my TBR is going to be The Ruin of Kings by Jin Lyon. This is the first book in the Chorus of Dragons series and um, I have read this book already. I had an arc when it originally came out. I was a part of a block tour, got an arc, freaking adored it. So I always wanted to pick up the first book in a finished copy when the second book had came out, but I never did. Every time I would go to Barnes and Nobles, I would pick it up then put it back down because I'm just like, I don't want to buy it right now. I read it already. I don't need it in my collection. However, I am a part of a block tour for the third book that is coming out, A Memory of Souls. And in being a part of that, they said that if we needed copies of books one and two, we could request it. And I did because I have an arc of book one, but not a finished copy. And I also have book two. So, The Rune of Kings by Jen Lyons. This is, I want to say YA fantasy because the character is a teen, but it's more so like new adult adult fantasy for me in my head I don't know the correlation but um this follows Kyron who is a I'm gonna say either a bastard son or a secret son to um this king or royalty rather and uh he does some crazy stuff and he gets caught up in this whole political drama so my question is like what happened at the end because I know he had to be on a run for his life because things things went left field like completely left field. This is very very politically driven. Um, there are demons involved in this. There are different races which I do enjoy that aspect. There are actual dragons in the book like real dragons which I love. So um, I'm excited to dive back into this and revisit Karen and um, Talon. Talon is a shape-shifting thing. Um, she, I think she's a demon that can shapeshift into people. So um, this storytelling is a little polarizing because Karen tells the story from like the current event and then Talon tells the story from the very beginning. Um, so it can be polarizing with the way they tell the story, but it eventually meets to the same point and then continues on. So just a heads up. But this book is clocking in at 542 pages. This will be a four day read for me yeah four day read um this is going to fulfill prompts two and three so prompt two is to read a tome audiobook and then prompt three is to read the tome recently acquired of course i recently acquired this from the publishing company so that is this and i'm excited for this book i love that this is red um my art copy was not red it was gray and black so i really really love this like this is amazing amazing um so yeah can't wait to dive back into this i highly 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 recommend this this is definitely my one of my favorites and since i'm going to reread it i will have an actual review because i know when i read the arc i think i said i wanted to do a, a review but i didn't do a review for it so now that i have a finished copy i'm going to reread it and um yeah but if you want to see like my initial written review i will leave it linked down below to when i initially read the book Okay, so the third book on my TBR is going to be The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter, and I'm super excited for this. This is actually going to be the book club pick for August for the Busy Bee, Busy Bee Book Club, hosted by Aaron from Booked and Busy. So I'm so stoked for that. But um, yeah, this is actually going to fulfill prompt six, which is to read a tome by a Black author. Evan Winters is Black, and this is African-based fantasy. I cannot wait to get into it. I've heard so many great things about it. So this book is clocking in at 523 pages, and this will also be a four-day read for me. So yeah. Okay, so the fourth book on my TBR is uh, this one, <laughs> which is 12 Kings and Sharakai by Bradley P. Pulu. This is the first book in the Song in the Shattered, Song of the Shattered Tans is what it's called. Um, I do own the other books as e-arcs and e-books, but um, I have a physical copy of this. I actually found this at uh, Dollar Tree, which was like insane. I haven't been to Dollar Tree in a minute, so I probably should go book hunting. But um, yeah, I had found this and this is actually blurred by Robin Hobb, which I didn't even notice. I have read two books from Robin Hobb so far, so 
yeah but i was enjoying this but i never got a chance to finish it so this is going to fulfill prompts five and nine so prompt five is to read a tome of course it's a tome and prompt nine is to read a tome that you started during a different round i started this when i initially started tome topple during round eight but i never finished it so i got to chapter 30 i got up through 38 which is page 353 um literally never went back you can see my bookmark never went back to finish it um i was thoroughly enjoying it cicada and the different kings there are 12 kings um in this land and um it was interesting there were demons and everything i just never finished it so i'm excited to dive back into this world um and actually finish it and because i do have a new annotating system i can now annotate this differently i was annotating at the beginning I'll show you guys a page like I was making annotations and marking and highlighting and things like that at the very beginning but um I just I never continued on so I'm excited to re dive back into this world so we have this as my fourth book on my TBR okay so now for book number five I can go two ways I can pick one the first book I'm going to show you will only fulfill um prompt four which is a standalone tome um, and that would be Race the Sands by Sarah Beth Durst. I had received an arc from Goodreads. I won the Goodreads giveaway and got an arc for it. And this is an epic standalone fantasy. It actually says epic standalone fantasy on the back. I do own her, what is it called? Queens of Renthia series. Um, I own the ebooks of them, but I don't have physical copies. And I've always wanted to read from Sarah Beth Durst, but I just haven't. So I can go with this because it is a standalone tome just saying um this is clocking in at 528 pages so i definitely can go with this if i just want to complete eight prompts but we'll see um we're gonna put this to the side i also did not tell you how many pages were in the last two books so um 12 kings and sharakai has a total of 580 pages now if i want to complete prompt four which is to read a standalone tome and then prompt seven i think it is which is to read a tome in a genre you don't usually read i have three options the first one i can do is a classic because i don't read a lot of classics like at all i own classics don't read them don't ask me why but i can do obsessed and sensibility by jane austen however this is a reflective reading guide written by karen swallow prior so it has the actual story with additional tidbits about the book now this is the best way that i can explain it is that this is a christian's reading guide to reading sense and sensibility because jane austen was a christian and karen swallow prior is starting a series in which she takes a lot of classics she has sense and sensibility out in a heart of darkness as well which i do own she's working on frankenstein the scarlet letter and um there's another one she's working on hold on jane Eyre. so i'm hoping those come out soon with the pandemic it might not come out anytime soon but i'm hoping they come out soon but um yeah i can go with any of these but uh it's pretty much a reflective reading guide where she's breaking down certain things um, for sense and sensibility through the eyes of a Christian, um, basically. So we have this. This clocks in at 514 pages. 514 pages. Um, but again, I don't read a lot of classics. I love this edition, though. It is gray. There's silver foiling on it, and it just it screams yes. So I could definitely go with this. Definitely, definitely could go with this. So this is an option. Okay, so the next one I can do is going to be a YA historical fiction. I'm not big on historical fiction. I can't really stand historical fiction. Um, it's one of those genres where it's either a hit or a miss for me. I don't read too much of it. I own a lot of historical fictions, but I just, I don't care for them too much. Um, so I have this one, The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepetis. Um, this is clocking in at 500 pages for me. This is a book of the month copy. Um, so I could go with this. All I know is that this is set in Madrid during what year? 1957. So, um, and it deals with like photography and this girl, I think she works for the hotel that this dude is staying at. Don't really know. I heard pretty good things about it. So I can go with this as an option. But again, I don't read a lot of historical fiction. So we don't know. Um, this is a book of the month copy, but I did not get this from book of the month. My mom ended up signing up for the double day book club for me. And um, yes, yeah, so they sent me this copy of that. But this is a standalone. So we can do this. Okay. The last book I have is going to be a sci-fi dystopian. Now, I don't read a lot of sci-fi. I used to enjoy sci-fi a lot at the beginning of my reading journey. But as I got older, I found that fantasy and um, romances were like my type of thing. So this is a sci-fi dystopian and it's a little bit of a confusing book to explain i 
read it but i read it so fast that i don't remember what happened so i'm picking it back up and this is a standalone from what i understand this is a standalone um and it's terraformer by colleen hoke the way that i can explain this is like just picture humans not being the ruling race but the ruling race being plants and trees type of story that's the best way that i can explain it so plants nature is basically the ruling race in this world and humans are seen as less than i'm gonna leave it like that and that's that but the cover is gorgeous i love the cover on this these butterflies i die for and here's the back but um yeah so this is clocking in at 556 pages so i can go with any one of these okay any one of these books i can go with um so i'm actually gonna have my sister pick a book um and then tell you guys which book she picked okay guys so i literally just went into the kitchen because my sister is doing dishes and um i put the books on the table explained each and every book and she picked one a classic um so she knows i don't like classics when we lived in new york i used to go to the library that was not literally down the block from us and i would get classics but i would hate those classics and she knows like classics are an iffy subject for me an iffy genre um but i own so many so i'm excited that she actually picked this one because i love the cover but i'm a little nervous so this is going to be my fifth actual book on my tbr um and again this is for prompts four and seven prompt four is to read a standalone tome sense of sensibility is a standalone and then prompt seven is to read a tome in a genre you don't usually read which is classics so i'm excited but i'm not so yeah this clocks in at 514 pages so i'm pretty sure that this is going to be a five day read for me um i'm gonna have to calculate that for myself it might be four maybe five we'll see but um uh, yeah so this is the fifth and final book on my actual tbr now if i happen to get through those and happen to get through my dag on tbr then i'm going to throw in the name of all things by jen lyons which is book two in the chorus of dragon series because why not like why not this book clocks in at 571 pages i have already like separated this because either way i have to read this book sometime this month whether it is during tone topple or not um so yeah this will be a five day read for me so yeah so let's let's grab all the books let's grab all the books in the order that i plan to possibly read them possibly we'll see um eh, i don't know if this is even gonna make it as a thumbnail maybe we can try to get this to a thumbnail i don't know how you booktubers do this because this is like insane but oh god okay please don't fall these are my books um quick picture these are my books uh that i plan to read for tone topple so six books pray for me um because i still have like 10 other books to read outside of these so hopefully it goes well i might vlog um for tone topple because i had i did enjoy vlogging during the reading rush which i know apparently there's like a whole thing with the reading rush going on um i don't keep up with the twitter stuff or the book two drama at all so um i did see a bunch of other videos about it which i again didn't know about but um yeah so i guess i'll be finding a new readathon to partake in because apparently um the magical readathon is going to be changed because everything that went on with jk rowling rowling and then um now the reading rush is having issues so i love tome topple i'm excited for tome topple and yeah but I'm excited for these books and these tomes and that is pretty much it if you are partaking in tome topple let me know what books you're going to be reading for tome topple i'm super super interested in reading more tomes whether it's fantasy or not and um that's pretty much it i'll see you guys in the next video bye